the vision of opportunity. We pray for eyes that connect the vision of opportunity. In verse 31 to verse 35, John chapter, uh, the, the passage, chapter 4. Let me just read uh, verse 35. From verse 31 to verse 35. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And you remember we sang a song here about God's will. All the singing and the worship was, it was really aligned. And I thank God for that. We talked about God's will um, a little earlier when we said, my soul says yes, yes to your will. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? They were just talking, talking to one another. My food, why don't we read that verse together? Verse 34, let's read it together. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Let, allow me to read the next one. Don't you say, don't you have a saying? It's, for, it's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes. There, the vision, the vision of opportunity. Open your eyes and then look. Not just open. There is opening and there is looking. Open your eyes and then look in verse 35 at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. The reason why I do mapping, and I've said this several times here in my preaching, that every Monday I go around the city, uh, every Monday, I, I, and I pray. The focus of my prayer is people. And let me suggest to us that people are God's prized possession. And uh, right now, God is looking at people. God is looking at you. He knows you by name. I said last Sunday that even when your hair falls, God knows it has fallen. You are not aware. God is aware. The, the premium thing on planet Earth for God is people. And uh, therefore, also, we should be aligned in terms of vision. And uh, we look at people. Look at demographics. Look at people, the children demographic, the teenage demographic, the youth demographic, and then you go on the young adults, the family, and uh, you, you look, you look, you look. And if you need to Google or do a research or visit some of the Bureau of Statistics and places like this ones, just so that you know that we have people around. Right now, the world population is eight point what? How many are they? Eight point some billion? Eight point six? Okay, do we have anybody from Bureau of Statistics here? <laughs> yeah? Eight point? Okay, nobody seems to know the world population. It's probably 8.5 or something like that. And uh, I think they are equal men and women. In fact, when I was conducting a wedding yesterday in Karen, I told the gentleman called Joseph, can you step uh, to the, because uh, the lady had uh, the veil over her face. I said, can you step and confirm that this is the woman you have chosen for yourself over and above 4.3 billion women uh, on planet Earth. <laughs> the guy was very excited uh, to walk and, and do that. But uh, keep your eyes where they need to be. Keep your eyes on people. Whether you're a business person, this is good strategy. And doesn't matter what you do in life. Keep your eyes on people. Just simply keep your eyes on people. What made Jesus very successful? He listened to the voice of the Father, but he also kept his eyes where he needed to, to keep them. And that is why he's trying to encourage his disciples to keep their eyes where God keeps his eyes. And that is people the various demographics, because the calling of God, your destiny, actually your opportunity is in people. And as you look, you will see the various situations and scenarios, and you'll hear God saying, uh, go here, do this, and do the other, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, God connects you. That's how God connects you. And you keep your eyes uh, on, on people. So these disciples of Jesus were more concerned about food than the soul of this woman. And they're interrupting a very good fellowship and interaction between the king of kings and this one woman, whom he's actually empowering, you know? 
they come and they begin to distract with things here and now. And I want to say that vision has different levels. There is physical vision. Vision where you see just on the outside, you know, you just see, and you can judge very quickly. And there are people who are very quick to judge on the basis of just a very quick survey, and then they, you know, uh, make conclusions, and they begin to judge. But there is another level. There, are, there is a level of the spirit. There is a level of the emotion. There is a level of the mind. And, and uh, in terms of vision, these guys who are disciples of Jesus, all they were seeing is a woman and Jesus. And their heads were going, like the Japanese say, krakrapu. Krakrapu means running mad. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, how can this gentleman be talking to a woman, and this woman is a Samaritan woman. So they are beginning to judge within themselves. But somehow, because of the embarrassment of the moment, they present or forward some meal that they actually had, had brought. Remember, Jesus stopped at Jacob's well. The disciples, all of them, not even the assistant, some of those ones like John that were very close, and Peter, they decide where we are Chakula, Sister Tunaenda, and they went to Saika, and they leave Jesus alone. And I want to say those people in leadership, sometimes you'll be left alone. And sometimes people will not understand what you're doing. But keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Keep going for it. So Jesus knows his mission all too well. His mission is to come for this one. And therefore he stops there. The lady comes over and they start that conversation. He asks for water. He says, I can give you living water. This is temporal water. I'll give you living water. The disciples are here. They have been in that town, but they miss the point. They don't see the, the souls of men and the souls of women. Instead, they see shops. They see clothes. They see shoes. They are browsing. They are window shopping. And eventually, they end up in this Yamachoma space that's also selling uh, fries or chips. And they decide, this is where we stop. They eat enough. And then after they are full, they decide... We need to take some food for, for Jesus. It must have been wrapped in some foils, foils of the day to keep it warm. And even as I'm sharing about Nyamachoma and fries, uh, I, I hope I'm not whetting somebody's appetite. Because <laughs> I know after this we're going to have sumptuous meals. The Lord will give us those meals. Hallelujah. Yeah, yesterday again I was in another meeting. <laughs> where after I finished that meeting, they decided they had slaughtered a goat. Yeah? And they had prepared some of it put some of the ribs, you know, in a foil. It was doba goat. When I got home, I realized it was something very nice. And together with my children, we really enjoyed it. It was also juicy. Am I hurting somebody's appetite? <laughs> it was very juicy. And last evening in our dinner, we enjoyed those ribs, and they were long, they were nice, the meat was fibrous, it was coming out easy. You know the way you just <laughs> pull it, <laughs> and it's juicy. Yeah, and you have your fries. We also added some ugali there. I want you to imagine the scenario. <laughs> it was very nice. Now, can you imagine the temptation? You are very, you're hungry. You're very hungry. And the group that's supposed to stand by you, they are bringing this meat. Can you imagine the temptation to turn around, leave the lady, turn around, and begin to address this? One of the major distractions, I talked about going on a tangent, going 30 degrees, and you're off, is, is the here and now. I said several levels of vision. The things we, the tangibles, these ones, the things we see, and we can live at that level. It is possible to operate, make the here and now a God in your life. And you are pursuing these things everywhere, like me being conned by that guy in Masabe to get a plot of land. You know, and you make it your God. But thank God for Jesus and how firm he is in terms of his life mission, you know? And nobody will shake him there, even with Nyamachoma and chips just here. And that is why he makes this very, very succinct statement. And he said, my food in verse 34, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. I like it. And I pray that we shall have God raises people in Africa who have this kind of level of resolve. And it doesn't matter what happens around them. It doesn't matter the temptations that rise around them. They stick to the path and they stay on the path. 
Let me stay, speak to the young generation because Jesus was young. Actually, he was very young. He died at age 33. And I also know other young people. David was 17 when he made a resolve, you know, to follow the path of God. Esther was a very young girl. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and even Daniel, these were very young people. Joseph was also just 17, Genesis 37, when he got the, the dream. And this young man made a resolve, like Jesus said, my meat, very clear, my meat is to do the will of God just in a very short sentence and to complete the work that he actually gave me. And I know there are young people within our continent, and they are here in the service here. Some of us are following online. I thank God for young people. I bless God for a young generation that is coming up that's going to make a big difference. Yes, we can clap. We can appreciate these young people. And one feature of these young people, like Daniel in Babylon, is their resolve. Does this remind you of Daniel? Does a statement like this by Jesus take you back to some young people in the Old Testament and who actually made a mark? And so Jesus, speaking to his team here, says, you are off mark. And Jesus can speak to a whole church like Parklands Baptist Church and say, you got your priorities wrong. And he's saying, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. And I pray for the meetings of young people, bring, bring us back on course, because God is doing something uh, among a young generation. And so they brought the meat. Jesus was doing kingdom work here, and uh, he made that important statement to them. And you know, this lady took off from there, went on, on her mission, and left Jesus and the disciple having that, I don't know whether to call it a diatribe, but uh, there's a kind of a, a conversation that's actually happening that is very deep. It's a very deep. And sometimes you meet somebody who takes you deeper. You meet somebody in life who actually a friend, but they help you develop roots and they help you be profound, in other words, in your life. And I pray also, again, that apart from the voices from our friends, then we would have the impact from our friends. Disciple makers, you know? who we spend time with and actually help our eyes to connect. And so I said, people are God's prized possession. And if you look at the various demographics, you will quickly know what God is doing around the world, and you will know where the opportunities are, and you will know what God wants you to do. So Jesus said, open your eyes, look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. And I say from this pulpit, the harvest fields of Nairobi are ready and they are ripe. The harvest fields in Kenya are ripe and they are ready. And we are the army that Jesus is speaking to. And he's saying, yes, this is the time for us to connect. And somebody may say, Pastor, but where are they? These ones are in our neighborhoods. They are in our workplaces, business centers. Everywhere we go, those opportunities are actually there. So eyes, we can pray for our eyes and say, God, open my eyes.